Before we begin, I want to explain that literature, in the context used here, means any written text about a subject. It might be a book, a journal article, a research report, a review, a magazine article, or even a primary source document, such as a diary or letters. However, there is a limitation related to quality. A review of literature expects the author to be using high quality sources as part of the review. Except in extraordinary circumstances, there's no place in a review of literature for the sensational novel or even popular press articles. A review of literature is your entry into an ongoing professional discussion of a particular topic. Its main purpose is to develop and offer an overview of significant literature published on a topic. It's impossible for anyone to simply jump into the middle of a discussion that may have been going on for decades. So in order to prepare yourself for making and supporting claims about a subject, you review what has already been written by the experts. This helps you to gain a measure of understanding before you begin making your own claims. A review of literature can be just a simple summary of the sources, but not for this class. But it usually has an organizational pattern or theme and combines both summary and synthesis. A summary is a recap of the important information of the source, but a synthesis is a reorganization or a reshuffling or a recombining of information from multiple sources. It might give a new interpretation of old material or combine new with old interpretations. Perhaps it traces the intellectual progression of the field, including the major debates, telling us a bit about what the conversation is for this topic. The simplest answer for why a review of literature is done is to learn the background of the subject in a more organized way. A review of literature is all about discovering what's behind the entry point, which may be nothing more than the name of the subject. Every subject has a history that can and should be explored by anyone determined to enter the conversation. Janet Johnson explained some specific reasons for doing a review of literature. These included to see what has and has not been investigated, to develop general explanations for observed variations in a behavior or phenomenon, to identify potential relationships between concepts and to identify researchable hypotheses, to learn how others have defined and measured key concepts, to identify data sources that other researchers have used, to develop alternative research projects, to discover how a research project is related to the work of others. A review of literature is done by examining substantive articles, books, or other sources connected by themes or issues. You've already begun the process by determining your topic, preparing an annotated bibliography, writing a summary response essay, and writing in a hypothesis and an outline of key points relative to your project. All of those activities can be brought to bear on your review of literature, the sources you've located and the ideas you've discovered and even generated because of those sources may become useful parts of a review of literature. A review of literature, like a research paper, is usually organized around ideas, not the sources themselves as an annotated bibliography would be organized. The sources you use in the review of literature should be of the highest quality. This is not the time to use newspaper articles or popular press magazines or standard websites. At the very least, you want to examine substantive or professional journal articles or books. You should look for themes or issues that connect your sources together. Do the sources reveal distinctions in the way the problem is perceived? A trend in the field? A raging debate among experts? Competing solutions? Pick whatever theme or issue you discover that connects the articles. Use that connection 
to organize your review. You might even set out to find articles related to the way you want to organize your review. For instance, you may have discovered a disagreement among experts and then decide to look for substantive articles related specifically to that debate point. Maybe you've discovered that over the years, a different way of thinking about the problem has evolved and decide to find articles to show that evolution of thought. Think of this as a way to educate yourself about the problem or issue you intend to research. Your objective is to uncover whatever the experts have to say. Just as with a summary response essay, this is not the time to take on making an argument yourself. Rather, you are examining the writing of others so you can learn where they stand on the same subject. A review of literature contains the same basic elements of an academic essay, in MLA format, please. The introduction gives a quick idea of the topic of the literature review, such as the central theme or organizational pattern. It lets the reader know how you will be tackling the literature and what cues she might expect to find. The introduction should define or identify the general topic, issue, or area of concern, providing an appropriate context for reviewing the sources. Point out overall trends in what has been published about the topic, or conflicts in theory, evidence, and conclusions, or gaps in research or scholarship, or a single problem, or a new perspective of immediate interest. Establish your reason, point of view, for reviewing the sources. Explain the interest you have in this topic and how you went about gathering sources. What questions guided your search? The body contains a discussion of the sources and is organized chronologically, thematically, or methodologically. The body should Group the research studies and other types of literature, reviews, theoretical articles, case studies, etc., according to common denominators such as conclusions of authors, specific purposes or objectives, chronology, point of view, etc. Summarize individual studies or articles with as much or as little detail as each merits according to its comparative importance in the literature, remembering that space, length, denotes significance. The more length, the more significance. Provide the reader with strong umbrella sentences at beginnings of paragraphs, signposts throughout, and brief so-what summary sentences at intermediate points in the review to aid in understanding comparisons and analyses. The conclusions recommendations discusses what has been learned from reviewing the sources so far. Where might the discussion proceed? What are the major points that come from this review that will be further discussed in the research project? The conclusion should summarize major contributions of significant studies and articles to the body of knowledge under review, maintaining the focus established in the introduction. Evaluate the current state of the art for the body of knowledge reviewed, pointing out major flaws or gaps in research, inconsistencies in theory and findings, and areas or issues that might require future study. Conclude by providing some insight into the central topic of the literature review. Thank you.